Howl's Moving Castle and I have a bit of a history. I remember watching Howl's Moving Castle years and years ago when I was like a young teen, and I remember not liking it. I just didn't get it, I guess. Howl's Moving Castle was pretty popular back in the day. It came out in 2004, but I remember like even years and years after that, people were still talking about that movie. People were talking about Studio Ghibli in general. I'm sure we all love at least one particular Studio Ghibli film. Mine has to be Princess Mononoke, I'm pretty sure. Either that, Ponyo, or Grave of the Fireflies. One of those three. Studio Ghibli films have this, um, sense of care and warmth to them. They just feel so cozy. You'll find many people describing their films as cozy and comforting. It might have something to do with the animation style, but that's a different topic. What I find personally fascinating is that, you know, even though Princess Mononoke, Ponyo, Grave of the Fireflies are my favorite Pseudo Ghibli films, for some reason I just feel this strange attraction towards House Moving Castle. Like, I've never covered anime before on this channel. This will be the first video on the channel that has to do with anime, and that's pretty significant. So why of all anime films am I attracted to House Moving Castle the most? It's not my favorite Studio Ghibli film. I didn't even like it from what I remember. And yet it has this strange pull that I just find so alluring and enticing. And so even though I was a little nervous to rewatch House Moving Castle after all these years, I decided to give it a go. And boy, did my opinion change the second time around. I really, really liked this film on the second watch. And so now I am here to talk about this movie and talk about how utterly strange it is and how it shouldn't work on many levels and how it kind of doesn't work on many levels and also how none of that really matters. It's, it's a weird one. Animated films are already complex and hard to talk about in general. That's why I don't really talk about animated films because they're because they're always generally slightly more complex than life action films. And so I'm kind of shooting myself in the foot by picking House Moving Castle of all things to to cover for my first animated film video essay, a film that is known for being rather confusing and complex. But I want to give it a go and I will try to make everything as simple as possible. Right, so How's Moving Castle is primarily about this love story between this girl named Sophie and this wizard named Hal. Sophie gets transformed into an elderly woman by a witch early on in the film, and that sort of kickstarts the um, plot and gives Sophie a reason to go visit Hal's Moving Castle. And this transports Sophie from her ordinary regular life to this life that is full of magic and sorcery and romance and war. Sophie herself isn't too complex or isn't going through any particularly hard circumstances, besides her sense of insecurity and being turned into an old woman, of course. This film more so is about Hal's flaws and how despite his flaws, Sophie learns to love him as the story goes on. And I think at the core of the film, that's what Hal's moving castle is about. These two people who learn to love each other despite their flaws. But it's coated in this complex paint of magic and sorcery and political and social commentary and war and bright vibrant colors and flying objects. Miyazaki loves his flying objects. So I think what was happening the first time around when I watched the movie that made me not like it particularly was the fact that I was too hung up on too much of the facts, too much of the actual plot and just trying to figure out what everything meant. And I think what made me enjoy this movie so much more and appreciate it so much more the second time around was that one, I just grew up and matured and watched a lot more films. And two, I wasn't too hung up on too much of the plot points. I just kind of let the movie transport me to this new world and I just let it sweep me away with its vibrant, warm visuals, with its beautiful soundtrack, with its comforting feeling, I just turned off my brain and experienced it rather than trying to understand it. And so I think that's what led to me really liking this film the second time around. But I still didn't really understand what was going on similar to how I felt during the first watching. But this time around, I just seemed to not care as much. And this leads to an interesting phenomenon where I really enjoyed the movie, but I didn't really understand most of it. And so I went to Google to see if anyone else was feeling the same way about this movie and just how weird this feeling is. And sure enough, it is a widely discussed topic. 
people and critics have absolutely bashed Howl's Moving Castle for its incoherency and messiness and contrasting tones. And then on the flip side, people have stated that, that, oh, you know, it was adapted from a book and some of the things were changed, so that's why some things don't really make sense. And that there are a lot of symbolism in this film, so they are showing you a lot of things instead of telling you things straight out. And how, once again, House Moving Castle is more so about the experience rather than the statement. Though there are a lot of statements made in this movie, like pacifism and the futility of war, like old age and how that should be treated like a good thing, like love and loyalty, artificial machinery and modernity, a lot of stuff. And these layered themes are what many find compelling about House Moving Castle and are also what many others find frustrating about it. Right? It's messy, it's incoherent, the tones are too contrasting, there's no plot, nothing's happening, it's too slow. And I get all of this, both sides, because I experienced this movie both ways. And it's such an interesting phenomenon. Because let's take a movie like Beautiful Boy, for example, which I watched very recently, like, like yesterday recently. <laughs> um, that movie has a very clear-cut theme, and it has a very clear-cut topic that it wants to tackle. Drug addiction. Boom. Simple. That is what it's about. It's also about divorce and the father-son relationship, but primarily it's very clear-cut. It's about drug addiction. Beautiful film, by the way. Like, I loved it. In contrast to that, Howl's Moving Castle is a love story, founding family, fantasy adventure, feminism empowering, modernity criticizing, political social statements on war. It's not as clear-cut, there's a lot of things going on. And it's not just the fact that there's a lot going on, it's the fact that the movie gives you just enough to barely understand what's going on, but it also kind of feels like, like it intentionally doesn't give you the full picture. Like it's purposely holding back information. And so I understand the frustration, I, I really do. But I also just, on the second time watching it, didn't really care about any of that because I treated it more like a feeling movie, like a movie that I needed to experience. I think that's what made me like it a lot more the second time around. And you know, I searched on Google again. Can I like a movie without particularly understanding it? And the general consensus is yes. You don't have to understand all the elements of a movie or a story to appreciate it. And that made me feel better about liking Howl's Moving Castle now, having hated it before. And you know, people in this discussion talked about movies like Mulholland Drive and 2001 A Space Odyssey and how they didn't understand those movies at all, but, but they really enjoyed it for the experience. And so I would classify House Moving Castle as part of those type of movies because I don't know what the message of 2001 A Space Odyssey is. I've watched that movie, I, I don't understand anything going on in that movie. So yeah, House Moving Castle would be akin to those type of movies. There are of course movies that have bold statements and give you like a thrilling adventure and experience and feeling, right? Like your Dune Part 2s, your Into the Wilds, your Bridge to Terabithias. Most movies have a bold statement to make and give you a thrilling experience, but there are some movies that excel at one particular side than the other, and House Moving Castle is better at the feeling and experience side of things rather than the particular statement side of things. So yeah, this video isn't meant to um, shame anybody. In my opinion, there is no right or wrong here. I totally understand both sides, the, the frustration and the, the appreciation for House Moving Castle. Um, this video is more so just, I guess, to serve as a way to explain both sides and why people are feeling the way that they are about this film so that there's a better understanding of the phenomenon that is House Moving Castle and that despite its crammed narrative, you can still find something to enjoy. That despite its contrasting tones, you can appreciate the spectacle and how it makes you feel. That despite your imperfections, you are still worthy of love. Thank you for watching my friends, leave your own thoughts in the comments below, I would love to read them. Have a wonderful day.